Hello Internet, my name is Sean V. Martin. Early in 2011, my wife and I were still deeply involved in the game that is World of Warcraft. We freaking loved that game, but for us it was all about player versus environment. Sure, sometimes we entered a PvP match, but the most exciting thing for us was exploring the environment and interacting with it, taking NPC quests, seeing how easy it was to fall off the world, hint, it's very easy, but the grinding aspect of the game, not to mention the cost of it, began to get to us. So when a little cheap game called Minecraft came along, it was not that hard to convert us, and we've been playing ever since. But now, thanks to a Minecraft forums member named Rumsey, we can do both. What follows is an installation guide for Rumsey's Crafting Azeroth. It is a full one-to-one -one WoW map recreation. If you want to know more about the process of making the map, check out his forum post in the info below. Otherwise, we're just going to get started. Once you get to the Crafting Azeroth post on the Minecraft forum, you will notice that you need a BitTorrent client in order to download the file. The client that I've always used for these purposes is called uTorrent. A get started guide is provided on their website but any torrent client will do. The initial download of all the files is slightly over two gig, but know in advance that when you unpack these files, it's going to be in excess of 23 gig. Make sure you have the disk space. Now I've cheated and I've already downloaded this file and it's just checking to make sure that I have the proper files downloaded. Depending on your internet speed and how many people are sharing the files, this could take a very long time or not that long. I was able to download it in just a little over an hour. Once you've downloaded the BitTorrent, you will see four files inside. Read the README first. Even though I am going to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions, I am making this installation guide literally a day after the first release. Something about the installation could change. In the future, he said he's going to release patches to patch the game. I will try and include any changes and addendums in the info below, but just in case I don't, read the f***ing readme first. In the readme, you will find links to two things that you need to go get yourself. So first of all, go get Craft Bucket. Here on the Craft Bucket website, all you need to do is click here to download. Your browser may warn you that downloading a .jar file could be dangerous. That's okay, we trust CraftBucket, so make sure you hit keep. The second thing you're going to need is something called the Multiverse Core Plugin. The reason you will need this is because the height of the maps in WoW is so tall that they cannot be contained in a single Minecraft map. This will require you to warp from map to map when you reach a certain height. To download this plugin, go to the link provided in the readme, click download in the upper right, then click download again. Again, your browser may warn you that it's dangerous to download a .jar. This one's okay. The next step is to create a new folder for your bucket server. I'm going to call mine bucket server. Take your craft bucket jar and drop it into your new folder. Now rename it to just craft bucket dot jar, like so. Next, you're going to want to create a new text document and you're going to want to rename it run.bat. Get rid of the .txt file extension. It's going to warn you that that might be a problem. Say OK. Back on the Craft Bucket website, if you hit Getting Started, you will see what you need to put into this file. Here are the two lines you need, and you can see here why I had to name the file craftbucket.jar. So copy these, edit your new batch file, and paste the lines in, and save. Now before you move any more files around, you need to run the server for the first time so that it unpacks necessary files. Double click run.bat to get it started. Once it's done, it will say done. In order to stop the server, you can type in stop. When it is actually stopped, it will say press any key to continue. Now you can take your multiverse core jar that you downloaded and put it into your plugins folder. The next step is to go back to the torrent file that you downloaded and unpack the plugins that were included. Inside the RAR file, you will find a plugins folder. Open this, take these three files, and copy them into the plugins folder. Go back up to the main folder so that you can see run.bat and craftbucket.jar, and the last thing that you have to unpack is these two enormous world map files. For both of these files, you're going to want to take all of these folders and drop them straight into your bucket server folder. You're going to want to do this for both the azeroth.rar and kalimdor.rar. Other than downloading the torrent file itself, this is the part of the process that is going to take the longest. Be patient, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take about 10 minutes or it could take about half an hour. Once all the files are unzipped, you've gone and gotten yourself a coffee or something to eat, this is what you should be sitting on top of. All of these Azeroth folders, all of these Kalimdor folders, and then all of the normal bucket stuff. There's one more thing that you might want to do before you start this up and running, and that is add your username to the ops file. 
my Minecraft username is Sean V. Martin, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, save the file, and close it. The only thing you have left to do is run it. Starting the server for the second time should not take as long as the first time because it has already generated the generic Minecraft worlds. All it has to do is load all of the new levels into memory. Once you've got the server running, you can go ahead and open up Minecraft. If you're running them on the same computer like I am, you can use Direct Connect and use the home IP address. The home IP address has always been 127.0.0.1. Joining may take a little while. Once you join, you should spawn in Kalimdor near the South Fury River. And if you've played the game, you will probably recognize where you are. If you have added yourself to the ops file, you will have access to server commands, like setting the time, and MVTP. Now remember that we installed the Multiverse plugin. This will allow you to go back and forth from Kalimdor to Azeroth. You can do this by typing slash MVTP Azeroth, or slash MVTP Kalimdor. And that is pretty much the entire process. From there, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with this enormous map. But understand that it is 275 square kilometers of WoW. Me? I'm planning to walk the whole thing, and I'm going to record it. So make sure you check that out. It will be posted here when it is posted. If you have any questions about this installation guide or any of the steps that I took, leave them in the comments below. If you have problems with getting Bucket to work, or with getting the map to function, or something, please contact the people who developed those things. They will be much better to help you than I will, trust me. If you found this installation guide useful, or helpful, or at least a little bit funny, please leave a like below. If you're interested in checking out the other Minecraft stuff I do, you can look at me playing on Hermitcraft up there, and my single player series Survive or Die up there. Also, you can subscribe to this channel for Minecraft and all other video game videos that I do. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around the world.